And joining us now to talk more about the latest developments in the Ukraine war is Andrei Dobryansky. He is the director of communications for the Ukrainian Congress Committee of America. Thank you so much for being here uh, this morning. Tell us, first of all, what you're hearing from people in Ukraine on the ground, the very latest. Well, uh, we are talking about what's happening in terms of these uh, refugee these displaced people. We have the growing number in Poland, Moldova, Hungary, and Slovakia, but there's also a growing humanitarian crisis for the people within Ukraine. And that's because there is no method to land planes with humanitarian supplies in Ukraine. This, uh, this piecemeal uh, effort of trucks by truck from different vantage points getting into Ukraine is still not as much as a cargo plane could bring into Ukraine. So we're going to have increasing structural struggles of medical supplies and food for the people in Ukraine. And as far as people wondering, well, why are people in Ukraine is because that's their country. And what we're seeing from the Russian side is if you're talking about the east, uh, those cities that are being bombed out like Mariupol, Russia is actively taking those people away from that area. So there, it's, a, it's another aspect of a war crime, if you want to call it a genocide, of lands being cleansed of people of, of, of Ukrainian descent. And then who knows what happens after that? Yeah, and I want to talk to you about that in a minute. And, and, and it seems like it was just a matter of time before food and basic supplies uh, w would run out within Ukraine. But then we also talk about all these people who have fled Ukraine, right? What does that do to the country? When you talk about brain drain and all of these people leaving, um, what, what's going to be left of the country, you know, if and when the Russians actually leave and go? Do you think everyone will come back and return to their country? Yeah, well, we're hearing on the ground, and there was a Senate codel that went last week to, to Poland. There's another delegation there this weekend. Uh, former Governor Pataki was on the ground in, in Hungary. Um, our representation was with all those groups, and the reports that we're getting back are, are that people are simply asking for the sky to be closed. That is what you're going to hear from everybody coming over. You're also going to hear that people do not want to stay away from Ukraine. That is their home. Uh, their city may be bond, but they're determined to come home. For many people, that's why they're not asking for asylum. Asking for asylum in most countries would involve reneging on your citizenship. They don't want to renounce their citizenship. They want to be able to go back. So that's demonstrating that this should be a temporary situation for these people and not permanent, a, a new permanent diaspora. And I want to talk to you about President Zelensky. He's been making appeals directly to the Russian people. He's popular in Russia. He's a native Russian speaker. He used to tour Russia all the time as a comedian. Um, and just today, he was warning the Russians that their army will suffer generational losses if this war continues. So what do you make of that strategy appealing directly to the Russian people? Well, the longer this goes, uh, war goes on, the more uh, it's going to be difficult to explain what happened during this period. Already, Russia has suffered on the level of what they've suffered, you know, back in Afghanistan. They have never suffered this amount of loss uh, during a war in modern times. So this is something that uh, Russia, the longer this goes on, if this was a quick invasion and they quickly gained power, then Putin would have done what he did in 2014 and 2015, which is lie about the bodies, uh, bury them separately and and be done with it. But the because this keeps growing, this becomes a harder problem to hide. And that becomes a, uh, I don't want to say a political problem. I just want to say a realistic civic problem within Russia. Uh, and what we're hearing from Ukrainians is that they're absolutely fed up with this excuse that, you know, you have to understand that, that Putin is in charge. We can't do anything. Uh, on the ground, uh, the, the vehemence that people feel uh, of disgust about the fact that people are allowing this to happen in Russia from, from the Russian side is very very palpable right now. And, and let's revisit uh, the point you made initially, which is that people uh, are reportedly being forcibly removed from the land and taken across the border. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we've already seen this happen in uh, Crimea and the occupied Donbass territory. Uh, we know that people have been either imprisoned or villages have been burned to the ground. This is the same thing that happened in, uh, in occupied Georgia as well. So this is something that Putin is familiar with doing. That's a plan of action to make sure that that ter territory is less likely to be re-inhabited by the people who live there to begin with. Um, the fact that he's bringing them into Russia, where they are not allowed to have any Ukrainian language schooling, no sense of identity uh, in that foreign territory, that, uh, that means that he's trying to look at those people as potentially people who he can convince to stop being Ukrainian. And what we're seeing throughout Ukraine, uh, because of that massive wave of refugees is Putin's intent to bomb civilian areas. So those areas are less populated. A less populated area is easier to control by the military. 
All right, Andre Dobryansky, thank you for joining us. I know it's not easy uh, for you to talk about all of this, but it's really valuable for us as a channel, uh, a go-between um, on the ground in Ukraine and, and here in the States. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.